a lot of parents are really concerned about what is the state of our federal public health system, given that current HHS Secretary, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., has compromised our advisory committee on immunization practices. And as a practicing physician who specializes in pediatrics and allergy immunology, I've made it my mission to try to help educate the public about the safety and efficacy of vaccines. This is the type of video that's going to help move the conversation in a positive direction so that families are better informed and to always take this information to talk with your doctor about. What I'm going to share with you is unfiltered, unedited information that I would normally present to my patients in my practice, but we're going to center it around medical ethics. There are four pillars of medical ethics. Number one is beneficence. Number two is non-maleficence. Number three is justice. And number four is autonomy. So we're gonna center this discussion around those four pillars. And when you weigh risks and benefits of vaccination, you have to weigh the risks of getting the vaccine versus what would happen if you are not and how that impacts the world around you. So with that, we're gonna get started. Vaccinations have been around for a long time. And ever since they have been created, back when Edward Jenner had provided the first ever known vaccine to a child to help protect against smallpox, there have been anti-vaccine critics who have spread a lot of false information. I'm here to provide you with some of the real information here. Beneficence refers to the fact that we want to do good by people in medicine. And vaccines have saved countless lives. Over 4 million estimated children are saved each year in the world because of vaccinations, according to the World Health Organization. That's very clear. We know that. Vaccines can help reduce the risk of transmission, reduce the risk of getting infected, reduce the risk of severe disease, disability, hospitalization, and death. That's clear. When the FDA approves vaccines and give formal recommendations from the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, we know that the benefits are going to outweigh the known and potential risks. When we talk about non-maleficence, and you hear that term, it means do no harm. But we have to weigh the risks of a vaccine versus what we're trying to protect against. So as an example, with the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine that's given at 12 to 15 months old and four to six years of age, that vaccine can carry risk of getting a fever, can cause fatigue, in rare instances, in one in 30,000 chance, there could be a transient lowered platelet count that can rebound on its own and go back to normal. Those are some of the examples of what could potentially happen. And that's within the package insert if you look in the vaccine itself. Compared to if we see more and more infections like we have recently with the largest measles outbreak in the United States in the past 30 years with at least 1,400 children getting sick two children dying and one adult dying due to measles, this virus can cause immune amnesia, which a vaccine can't do. That means that your immune system will forget previous infections and you're at risk of having a more severe infection. You can have pneumonia, you could have brain swelling, which could happen either right after the infection or it could happen many years later. So there's acute encephalitis and then there's subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. Those are just examples of what diseases we vaccinate to try to prevent people from getting sick, that's what we're preventing. So when you talk about non-maleficence and doing harm, you're gonna actively do harm if the population immunity declines because of declining vaccination rates, which we're already seeing that in real time as a lot of incorrect lies and misinformation are being spread all over the world. And it's not for anyone's good. The public health system is in trouble because of this, which is why I've been making this video. We talk about justice or equity, the idea that even though we don't live in a society in the United States that has universal health care, we wanna make sure that we can even the playing field through vaccination because in communities where they may have less access to health care, they have better access to vaccines and with formal universal recommendations, that helps provide a layer of protection that even those who are most vulnerable will get through herd immunity. So there are a small subset of people who can't get vaccinated for medical reasons. And in those cases, if other people are vaccinated, you're choosing to not only protect yourself, but other people. Lastly, there is the issue of patient autonomy. That means the patient or the parent gets to decide what is best for their child. And the problem with this that is at odds with vaccination 
is that we see in Florida that they're rolling back the school vaccine mandates. But the problem with that is, is that when you're giving the parent the choice to vaccinate their child or not, that means they're not only making that choice for their child, but for other parents' kids and putting those other kids at risk when they may not be able to vaccinate. They could be too young. They could be medically fragile. And so there is this issue when it comes to public health and how there could be an issue with patient autonomy, but we've been doing this for decades with seatbelt laws. We do that with smoking restrictions, with alcohol restrictions based on age. These are all meant to protect the greater good, which is why population-based immunity through vaccination, which is the safest, most effective way to do it, still is going to override the issues regarding patient autonomy. So when you look at all four pillars of medical ethics, beneficence, non-maleficence, justice or equity, and patient autonomy, vaccination makes sense for the vast majority of people. And if you find this information helpful, please share this post with as many people as possible and hit that subscribe button to stay informed.